just worry, anxiety, fear. And my parents could feel something in the house. Mm -hmm. And he was like, go home. And I tried to go home and it was like really hard. So I drove to the hospital. Number one, just want you to know that you're not alone. You're not alone if you feel like... What's up, everybody? My name's James. This is Brooke. We're the Franzes. And today we're going to be having a conversation at the table. This is typically what we do. We like to have conversations, just kind of meet here at the end of the night after we've put our kiddos to bed. And we thought it would be great to talk about mental health. You and I have both had our own journey with this and have had to navigate what this looks like, both being before we were Christian and then as Christians and how we found different strengths or strategies, tools, things that were available to us that were beneficial. And if you're watching this, number one, just want you to know that you're not alone. You're not alone if you feel like this is hard. You're not alone if you feel mm -hmm. like you're going through something really challenging and difficult. And so we just want to be able to have a conversation and invite you in. I definitely think that it's getting talked about more. I remember growing up, nobody talked about that type of stuff. So it's awesome just to be able to, to see that and all the different ways that people can get help too through therapy and online and there's so many books and podcasts and mm -hmm. different things out there um but for you growing up do you feel like you experience anxiety experience depression um like can you remember the first time you experienced it i can it was interesting i i had just become a full-time youth pastor and this was probably like year two of doing this. I remember being in my office and having a moment mm -hmm. where like I felt a tightness in my chest, a shortness of breath. And I was like, what is this? <laughs> like, what? Why do I feel like I'm going to die right now? And and was that the one when we went to the hospital? Or no? no, no, it was a different time. And I remember going into the pastor's office and, and saying, Hey, like, I don't feel good. I feel like I'm my tightness in my chest. And he said, you're having like a panic attack. Mm -hmm. And he was like, go home. And I tried to go home and it was like really hard. So I drove to the hospital and had them check me out. And they're like, yes, yeah, it's a panic attack. I, I just remember thinking that like, why me? Like, why, why am I going through this? Like, I believe in God. I have faith in God I'm taking all the right steps of, yeah, just trying to live healthy and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I guess one of the things that for me, I realized was sometimes stress and anxiety just really is coming from fear. And I didn't realize that I actually was dealing with fear, mm -hmm. but I was dealing with fear because I was dealing with worry and worry uh, is a leaf that grows on the tree of fear and fear. Um, mm -hmm. In order to deal with it, we had to get to the root. And so I remember, I'm sure you're going to ask me this question, but I remember, mm -hmm. I remember going out to spend a day or two with, um, with a mentor of mine and we went downtown to San Diego and we were walking the streets and I remember him asking me as he was, you know, walking with me through this journey of like mental health. And he was like, he asked me the question, I'll never forget it. He said, how real is Jesus to you, James? Mm -hmm. And Jesus was real. Jesus has always been real, but for me, I didn't realize that I was driving to accomplish my goals. I was striving to do this in my own power and might. And I was going into meetings without prayer, walking into situations where it's like I'm asking God to cover the bill, but I'm not like asking him to go with me into those spaces. And I realized that when you strive, <laughs> you're going to carry the weight on your own. And, yeah. and when you're worrying about a conversation you're going to have to have as a recovering people pleaser. Like I, I know what I'm it feels process, like. <laughs> I know what it feels like to feel like you're overwhelmed with a conversation you have to have with someone. And I would just encourage you, you, you don't have to do that alone. And Jesus wants to walk with you into those places. Mm. How do you feel like you began to manage that though? Like, how did you like, these are two different questions, but how did you begin to manage it? Or when did you feel like Jesus met you in it? I think Jay's... I, th <laughs> <laughs> I think Jesus has met me many times in those moments. And some was because I chose him and, and mm -hmm. some just because he encountered me. Mm -hmm. I didn't... Here's what I thought. I thought I had to learn how to get rid of anxiety and stress and what I didn't realize is that was the wrong mindset. You, you can't get rid of stress. What you can do is learn how to tolerate and manage it. 
And mm-hmm. so I had to learn how to manage it, not escape from it. Because when you, mm-hmm. when you, when you turn to escaping, you actually turn to unhealthy coping mechanisms that are not mm-hmm. good. It could be anything. But I think when you learn how to manage it, you actually have to confront it. When I was in sales and I was working at, in, in Texas, I remember uh, the, the, the head of the team, he was saying, just be a buffalo. And I was like, what? And he was like, he's like, Buffalo. So he's like, you know, like when there's like a storm that comes over the mountains, like in Colorado, he was just like, there's sheep that run from the storm because they don't want to get stuck in it. And so they run in and it actually catches up to them and they're in it longer. But then there's mm-hmm. like buffaloes that they see the storm and they don't run from it. They run into it. And when you run into it, you get through it quicker. Mm-hmm. And I think you can apply that to the idea of mental health when you Mm -hmm. choose to just be a buffalo like don't run from the problem like it's always going to be there Mm -hmm. confront it talk about it Mm -hmm. get in counseling and therapy do some self-discovery ask god to to lift you up you know Mm -hmm. there's so many scriptures that come to mind about this subject like philippians chapter four is such a great word of encouragement it says always be full of joy in the lord i say it again mm. rejoice verse six don't worry about anything instead pray about everything i think the seasons where i've experienced the most amount of worry or anxiety or or stress and really fear you can wrap all that in fear was when i wasn't mm-hmm. praying about it i was just trying to do something about it and i think doing something about it number one should be prayer first because if it's not then it's like you really don't believe then in the power of prayer, mm. right? And and if you are talking to God about it, are you complaining to God? Are you asking God to mm-hmm. come into the situation? Because there's times where I've talked to God in a way where I'm just like complaining. And I think he loves me enough to listen to that. But I think he also wants to give me solutions. And giving mm-hmm. me solutions means I need to be quiet and I need to be still and mm-hmm. I need to trust the process. Yeah. That's good. I think too, like in Mark four, like, you know, being out on the water and how God, like, it's just talks about like the wind and the water tossing and how he says, peace, be still. Like I've noticed any time that, um, I've felt anxiety or like a panic attack. I'm like, he's the God who tells peace to be still. Mm. And that gives me like peace. Like, I'm just like, God's in good. Like, it just reminds me like God is in control. Like no principality or darkness is like running this. God is. And I think there's times where we've prayed over each other. We've laid hands on each other and we've felt like immediate supernatural peace. And then there's been times where I'm like, you need to go outside, take some deep breaths, Mm -hmm. like practical solutions where now this is like a battle with just like our minds. Yeah. You know, and so I think there's like both and I think it's also what you meditate on too, mm-hmm. right? Like what what are you focusing on? I guess the word I'm looking for is what are you fixing on? Like mm-hmm. because I can be a fixer, not like trying to fix something, but I could be fixated on something. And right. and if your attention is always on this thing that's like the problem, then you're actually making it into an idol. And you have to take your eyes off that and fix your thoughts on what is true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, admirable. Keep putting into practice all you've heard from me and saw me doing. Then the God of peace will be with Mm. you. So it's about fixing Mm -hmm. your eyes on the right thing or the right one Mm -hmm. and not on this. It's like this is a big, scary mountain I've got to go climb. Mm -hmm. But in his presence, he mounts mountains like wax. And so it's like this doesn't have to be big as I'm making it. I'm making this a bigger deal than it really needs to be. And there are times, too where I don't even know why I'm stressed or why I have anxiety, you know, like why I'm Mm -hmm. feeling like, like shortness of breath. And then I realized that I just need to chill. Like Mm -hmm. sometimes we just need to take a break. I think one of the more, one of the most valuable things you and I've been doing is Sabbaths. Mm -hmm. And we've been doing this for years. Like this is not like a new practice for us, Mm -hmm. but we've discovered that we'll just keep going. Mm -hmm. And it actually takes faith to trust God to take a break and yeah. let God do the work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, release control, right? Yeah, and so how is like Sabbath impact your mental health? I would just say like it's like an automatic reset button, right? 
sometimes it feels like things are just like trying to attack your Sabbath. Have you ever noticed that? Like it's like a Friday, you're like, yes, tomorrow day off, like nothing to do or going to go to the beach. And then like you wake up annoyed or <laughs> it's just like little things yeah. or you get like a bill in the mail. You know what I mean? You're just like, dang, like I'm just trying to have a good day. I do. <laughs> Happens all the time. And so sometimes that, that can be difficult, but it's really just like a reset and a time to be set apart, right? Mm. Like it's a day that is set apart with the Lord and meditating on him and making sure like you are just spending time with Jesus too and bringing him into the day and setting, setting the atmosphere, right? Like I think that is as believers, like we carry that authority that Christ has given us. And so we're able to pray and just invite God into, into our day. Yeah. It's, I love how you brought up the idea of setting the atmosphere. This is something that Brooke is really good at doing. I'll come home from, cause I'm the one who works and, and Brooke watches the kid, raises the kids, gets more in the domestic kind of side of things of like cooking and cleaning and keeping the house in order. And, and I, when I come home and I've been gone all day, you don't wait for me to set the atmosphere of how our evening's going to be. You turn you like YouTube worship on and you, you set the environment. And I think that that like inviting the presence of God into your home is vital because that's Mm -hmm. where you spend so much of your time. You know, I think about what first Samuel chapter 16 talks about when the spirit of God left Saul, King Saul, it says in verse 14, now the spirit of the Lord had left Saul and the Lord sent a tormenting spirit that filled him with depression and with fear. So there is a Mm -hmm. spiritual side to this too, that deals Mm -hmm. with depression and fear. And it's interesting how it talks about whenever David would come and play the harp and he'd play worship, that Mm -hmm. the presence of God would actually drive out the spirit of depression and fear from Mm -hmm. Saul. Saul would be clear minded Mm -hmm. again. And so there are times where, you know, you are dealing with a chemical imbalance, but there's also times where you've opened a door and you've allowed the enemy to come Mm -hmm. in and, and he's wreaking havoc on your mind. And that's why Mm -hmm. we have to take every thought captive. Mm -hmm. We have to, an intrusive thought that comes in that is not from God. And it's not, it just seems like, why is this here? Take that thought captive and, and don't think about it again. Say, Mm -hmm. no, this is not honorable, pleasing and pure and good. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not going to give this the time of day Mm -hmm. and move on. Mm -hmm. And when the enemy realizes that his old tricks don't work anymore, he'll stop trying those tricks. The scripture Mm -hmm. actually says in James, James chapter four, uh, verse eight. So humble yourself before God, resist Mm -hmm. the devil and he will free flee from you. Come close to God and God will come close to you. Mm -hmm. Another translation says to submit to God, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. So a lot of us are trying Mm -hmm. to resist the devil, but we're not submitting to God. And sometimes Mm -hmm. God wants you to sit down. Sometimes God wants you to take a break. Sometimes God needs you to have that conversation. Sometimes Mm -hmm. God needs you to just let him take it. And I think if we skip step one, which is submitting to God, and we just try to do this on our own, we're fighting a spiritual battle in the physical realm. Working out isn't going to fix that. Mm -hmm. Eating better isn't going to fix that, but Mm -hmm. prayer will. Mm -hmm. You begin to realize as you invite God into it, and then you look back at your track record, you're like, whoa, the things that used to bother me or the things that used to really have a hold on me or overwhelm you don't have a hold on me anymore. You have to be sitting at the feet of Jesus and, and he'll give you a revelation. And I feel like sometimes for me, like the putting the, like the worship on it, setting the atmosphere. Like I remember saying that at a worship, uh, mega marriage, uh, conference that we spoke at. I don't, I don't remember what it was called, but, and I was young, I was a young mom and I, and I was like, yeah, like setting the atmosphere for when he gets home, you know, and some people are like, well, like life is so busy and whatnot. And I just, I just remember like just hearing from the Lord, like that is something that will like change your marriage. It will, it's something that your kids will see, you know, and even if you're single, like put worship music on, cook, Mm -hmm. light a candle, like, you know what I mean? Like something where it's just like, okay, I'm going to like just get into my zone. And there's also the word of God and worship music as well. And so that's, you're meditating on his word day and night. And that's just like, I just, it's like washing over you. You know what I mean? It's like cleaning you. I just love it.
Yeah, that's so good. And I think that worship music has always been a part of our uh, upbringing. It's been a part of our way of connecting with God. My parents, they bought a house in Temecula, California. It was it was a pretty awesome house, but they bought it from someone who was dealing with just worry, anxiety, fear. And my parents could feel something in the house. Even for me at a young age, I felt like the heebie-jeebies in the house. And so we had a boom box and we didn't have any of our stuff. And so we put the boom box in the middle of the living room. We put worship music on, hit that, you know, repeat button and just let the CD keep playing over and over and left the house. We came back two days later with all of our stuff and the atmosphere of that house was completely different. Mm -hmm. And it totally reminds me of first Samuel chapter 16 with King Saul dealing with the spirit of fear and depression. And when David would play the harp, it would drive out those spirits and he would be in his right mind again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the presence of God has been something that we have realized has helped us tremendously when it comes to our mental health. And also just recognizing Mm -hmm. too, that we got to give grace to ourselves. We're mm-hmm. navigating things we've never navigated before. We're we're taking on, you know, responsibilities we've never had. And it's interesting. There's a lot of data that shows that we're getting older, but we're still not maturing and developing because we've learned how to cope. You know, our phones are like escape mechanisms where we don't actually live in reality. And James chapter one really addresses the idea of dealing with trouble and what can happen. You know, you can run from trouble your entire mm-hmm. life and you can never grow or mm-hmm. you can consider trouble uh, mm-hmm. with great joy because it is an opportunity to grow mm-hmm. for when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, there's just, we're getting older. A lot of us are getting jobs for the first time. You know, we're jumping into marriage, obviously, for the first time. Like, there's just going to be things that you're going to have to figure out, mm-hmm. but you don't have to do it alone. Yeah, definitely. I agree. That's so good. And I think also just recognizing that this has been a journey. This has been a process for this. Like, if you're just jumping into this and you're like, oh, well, okay, you guys got to figure out. It's like, no, this has been a process of, I mean, like, well, like over 10 years. Yeah. Like this has been a process. Um, and so we're able to just share like a snippet of like how God met us and has helped us through it and manage it. And like I said, like we still do practical things when we're in the thick of it, you know, Mm -hmm. we got two kids, (laughs) they're two years apart two dogs, like life can be chaotic, but also recognizing that, you know, we have community and people around us. And so whether you're in a relationship or if you're single, um, just don't do life alone. You know, like we're meant to thrive in community. Um, Can I say something on that? Mm -hmm. You know, since we're talking about David, like David didn't do things alone. David had Jonathan Mm -hmm. and Jonathan was the one that was talking David off of a cliff. He was like, Mm -hmm. my dad's not going to kill you. You're going to be king of Israel one day. Like Mm -hmm. you need people in your life that talk you off cliffs. You Mm -hmm. need people in your life that remind you who you are when you forget who you are. Mm -hmm. And so, and also when you go into your hiding place, like no Mm -hmm. one could find David, but Jonathan knew where David was. And I think Mm -hmm. when I'm, when I'm, I'm feeling overwhelmed and I want to escape. You know where to find me. Mm-hmm. You know how to reach me. Our community knows mm-hmm. how to reach me. The pastors that we do life with, they're in our life and in our mm-hmm. circle. We're in group chats with people. We've been in a group chat for <laughs> called the homies. Shout out to the homies. We've been in a group chat with them for what? Like five years, seven years. Mm, probably like five Five years Five or of four years now where we just were real and we talk with each other. I hate group chats, but mm-hmm. I love this group chat mm-hmm. and I love these people. And these are people that we can reach mm-hmm. out to and do life with. And so you grew up in a generation where you have parents that maybe told you that counseling and therapy was something that was, you know, for people who are unhealthy or, you know, the, they're weak or they're, it's taboo. It doesn't need to be. And I think that you don't need to be going through a crisis to mm-hmm. talk to a counselor. In mm-hmm. fact, you actually find your first session mm-hmm. will be just like, so tell me your life story. And you're like, I'm going through fire right now and I mm-hmm. need your help. And so we built in therapy mm-hmm. and counseling before COVID. And then when we even navigated COVID, it was a blessing. When we closed down the church, we were 
in counseling therapy. It was a blessing. And I think that, you know, Mm -hmm. you should do it. Take the leap of faith, put yourself out there, find someone that is unbiased that you can talk Mm -hmm. to. So yeah, you have community, you have each other, you have God, but it's also important to seek out professional help too Mm -hmm. and not do it alone. And so anything left or should we pray? Yeah, I would say too, like get plugged in in your local church. Like if you're watching this and you're like, man, like I've struggled with those things and you kind of feel like you're hiding and in the cave and um, secluding yourself, like go, like go, go to a church that prays for people, like go and get prayer, go and make a session somewhere to do inner healing, like allow God to move in your life and touch you in a tangible way that you, you won't be the same afterwards. Cause that, that's what we had to do. Like, mm-hmm. and it, it was a process and um, you might have to do it multiple times, but we promise you like it's worth it. Yeah. hundred percent. Like there's freedom in it. Totally. I think that prayer and seeking God in that way is great because it, it can free from anything that is spiritual, but it doesn't actually give you maturity, right? It doesn't give you necessarily mm-hmm. wisdom, but it does in a way, um, free you up. And so maturity yeah. comes through to, like endurance and seasons mm-hmm. and character and like riding it out. And you'll learn mm-hmm. that the things that used to overwhelm you won't overwhelm you anymore. And by the grace of God, you'll be able to, take on new territory and new ground. And, and so, yeah, let's pray. And yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys. Yeah. Jesus, thank you for anyone who's watching this right now. Mm -hmm. If you're watching this video, God, thank you that you love us while we were still sinners. You died for us, God, Mm -hmm. that you said we can consider this with great joy when there's opportunities Mm of, and troubles that come. And so, God, I just pray for each person that's watching this video. I pray for your mental health. I pray that you would know you're mm-hmm. not alone. You don't have to be in hiding. You don't have to do this alone. Find a community that will surround you and champion you. Mm-hmm. Get the help that you need. Talk to a therapist. Go to counseling. Take the steps. And if you feel like that's just too much and it's mm-hmm. overwhelming, then pray to God and ask him to give you the strength to do it. And so yeah. I just bless you friend I bless you listeners Mm -hmm. uh I pray that you would Mm. experience the peace that comes beyond all understanding Mm -hmm. and to know that Jesus said in this life you will have trials Mm -hmm. and troubles but take heart I've overcome the world there's Mm -hmm. nothing you can't do without God God said that with man this is impossible but with him all things are possible you'll get through this amen amen